Kenny Biddle. Today, we're going to talk about paranormal phone apps. Yes, those things that you get on your phone that apparently help you detect ghosts, talk to ghosts, or make ghost photos. Yes, we're going to pick on a few of them. I mean, we're going to discuss a few of the apps out there, the most popular ones. Uh, let's start off with the ghost radar. Um, now, I was kind of, I was thinking about like what direction to go here. Should I start with some technical stuff, or should I start with an interview from the designer of the ghost radar? And you know, after I rolled some dice and uh, rolled a twenty, uh, I came up with the interview first. So let's get into it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a quote. Um, and now this quote came from, uh, where to come from? Huffington Post interview with Jack Jones, who is the, the designer of the app. And that's the Ghost Radar app, which is, let me show you. So we're all on the same page here. Um, this would be it, right here. Um, that is the Ghost Radar app, uh, Ghost Radar Classic. Okay, so it's gonna go around and look for ghosts. And apparently it'll come up with words once in a while. Um, honestly, I've had it going for uh, let's see. I had it going three nights already, and about an hour each, and it gave me three words. That was it. Um, but it's going to come up with some words here, and it also spins this radar looking thing here, and once in a while a blip will show up, and apparently that's supposed to be a ghost, and it's supposed to show me where a ghost is in proximity to me, um, and what direction. Now, the issue is that why, why I'm discussing this is that I've actually seen three teams, three paranormal teams use this on an investigation. They actually have a, like, uh, two of the teams had a, a notepad, like an iPad, um, one of those deals, a tablet, and one was on a coffee table, the other team was on a floor with, with the uh, tablet on the floor, and they had the ghost app going or the, uh, the Ghost Radar app going. And they were basing their investigation, what to do in their investigation, off of what was happening on that app. Anyway, so that's why we're going to discuss it. All right, so I have this quote, and I'm going to read it to you. Um, I'll read it to you in its entirety first, and then we'll, we'll, uh, you know, we'll pick it apart. So, let's see, he states, Mr. Jones states, the ghost radar looks at readings that the phone can detect based on the GPS or FM receiver that's built into all of these phones. If there's any fluctuation of the baseline, it's hoped that there's a paranormal entity out there that can manipulate the sensors on the phone so that it could somehow communicate. He goes on to say, if the app really works, and users are somewhere that's really haunted, the spirits will choose words and communicate. Let's take a closer look at this. So, it takes a look at readings that the phone can detect. And he actually suggests GPS and FM receiver. Yes, the phone can pick these up. Smartphones can pick this shit up. It's amazing what it can pick up. Um, you know what, we'll get into that a little bit later because we, we have more detail to go into on that part. Um, let's skip ahead. Let's see. These things are built into the phones. If there's any fluctuation of the baseline, uh, yeah, there's going to be a fluctuation. We'll also get to that in a minute. It's hoped that there's a paranormal entity out there that can manipulate the sensors on the phone so that it could somehow communicate. All right, you have two basic words that you should have picked out on that phrase. Um, one is hoped, and the other is somehow. Okay, this this really reminds me of like a used car salesman trying to convince you of something, because to me this is a red flag saying I don't fucking know, because he's hoping that there's an entity out there that somehow can communicate with you through the sensors. Um, okay. Here's here's a here's a test. Here's a test. Here's my phone. Okay. Um, if I hand it to you, 
and don't worry, this ain't like the the ring movie where I'm gonna come through the screen. If I hand this to you and say, hey, can you manipulate the sensors on here and make it say, I don't know, um, Kenny Biddle is awesome. Could you do it? Could you? I doubt it. Actually, I'm, I'm pretty much going to guarantee that you can't. When you have the designer of this app that's promoting it as something that communicates with ghosts, saying that, you know, hopefully there's something out there and that it could somehow manipulate the sensors. When, when he doesn't even know, then it's a good bet that it doesn't work. There's just, there's nothing to it. Um, let's move on. He also says that if the app really works, now, that phrase alone should say, oh, what? If the app really works, the guy that designed it and put it out there for ghost hunters to detect ghosts, to communicate with ghosts, for ghosts to communicate with ghost hunters, if he's saying, if the app really works, what the fuck? <laughs> Are you fucking serious? Why am I doing a high voice? I don't know. But that just tells you right there that it doesn't work. So why ghost hunters are using this on investigations in private homes, no less, is beyond me. I, I can't fathom the idea of why they would be using this and expect to be taken seriously. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. What else? He says, yeah, if the app really works and users are somewhere that's really haunted, the spirits will choose words and communicate. Okay. Well, here's here we run into a problem because... How do we know if a place is really haunted? Who decides? You have tons of groups out there that are going to say a place is haunted. You have a whole bunch of other groups that are going to come in and say, it's not haunted because we didn't find anything. You're going to have people like me that comes in and says, hey, it's uh, it's basically you guys making this happen. It's not haunted. There's no ghost here. And what do you have? Who decides what's haunted and what's not? So you're never going to know. That's a variable that's out there. That's one of them, like... Well, if you can't prove that it doesn't exist, then it must. That's one of them fallacies. It, it doesn't work that way. So, he's basically leaving it wide open for, you know, any ghost hunter to take this app and say, well, you know, it, it could work, so we're going to use it anyway. And then you're going to have them doing investigations and, you know, get all excited and gaga over because, it, it you know, there's a blip. There's a blip on the screen. It goes bleep. It must be a ghost. Um, it's also going to do this this magical thing where it's going to pick words. If there's a ghost there, apparently it's going to pick out words from your phone and spit it out. Again, how does it do it? I don't know. I mean, most of you out there probably are looking at your phone going, uh, I don't know how to make it say words. I, I, I'm the same way. I don't know how to make it say a word. If, if I wanted to say house, murder, um, two dead, something like that, I can't make it this, do it? What the hell? All right. Well, let's go back. Let's go back now. Um, I want to talk about the, the first part of the quote where it says, uh, the ghost radar looks at readings that the phone can detect. All right. So, and, and he offers... He offers GPS and the FM receiver. So yeah, okay, like I have a Droid X. So my phone can pick up radio stations. I can pick up FM, AM. It also has a GPS in it. So yeah, it can tell me where I am and it can plot a course to wherever I wanna go. That's great. What else can it do? You can do a lot of things. And this is this is cool. Um, I found this this app, this is just one. Um, of many that are like it. It's called Android Sensor Box. It's pretty cool. It comes up with all of the sensors that my phone has. Um, actually, it tests for nine, and apparently I only have seven of this. So right now, I can read off that I have an accelerometer, I have a light sensor, orientation sensor, proximity sensor, temperature sensor, sound sensor, and a magnetic sensor. Wow. I got all that shit in here. What I don't have is a gyroscope sensor or a pressure sensor. 
So I'm assuming that other phones do. So that would give you a total of nine uh, sensors that this, this application can read and test. I only have seven of it. Plus, if you jump in with the GPS and your FM, your AM, so that's seven, eight, nine, that's uh, 10 sensors that it can pick up, that it can draw from. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, that's 10 inputs, okay? Why is that important? Because these applications run on something called algorithms. What is an algorithm? An algorithm is any set of detailed instructions which results in a predictable end state from a known beginning. So let's say, for example, okay, um, you buy a box of Legos, okay? You buy a box of Legos and say for just shits and giggles, <laughs> that's a funny phrase. You want to build um, one of Jabba the Hutt's sand skiffs. Okay, from Star Wars, because Star Wars is an awesome movie. So you get this box, you open it up, you got bags, you got a whole bunch of bricks, Lego bricks. It's a big pile of bricks, okay? So you want to get from this pile of bricks to this. Ain't that cool? <laughs> In order to do that, you need a set of instructions. And actually, for something like this, and, and for the bigger things, you need a set of detailed instructions, which is the picture book, which is an algorithm. It tells you exactly what you need to do to get from point A to point B. And there you go. That's basically what an algorithm is. Now, what these ghost apps are doing, what this, this ghost radar and things like iOvilus and the, the, these other applications that uh, seem to have random stuff going on, they use what's classified as a randomized algorithm, which means that at any given point in the process, the instructions, they use a random number. Where do they get this random number? Well, they can pretty much get it wherever they want. In the quote that I read in the beginning of this video, he mentions the uh, GPS and the FM receiver. Well, you can scan the FM, just like a ghost box, and get any kind of frequency you want. Uh, you can use that to generate a number. Okay, you can you can go from the FM station from like 88 point something all the way up to what 107. Um, I don't know. Don't quote me on that. I don't know the exact stations, but anywhere in between, you can actually have numbers now. You can have 98.1. You can have 106.5. You can have all those numbers randomly inserted now, and you put it into an equation, boom, it spits out an end result, which could be uh, matched up to a list that has words. It could be matched up to a location. For something like the ghost radar, you can have the algorithm pull in two random numbers. You can pull it from the FM receiver, you can pull it from a GPS, and now you have two numbers your X and your Y, which will give you X or Y. That'll give you a point somewhere on that graph um, telling you where to put a blip. You could also pull in from any of the other sensors. The uh, the sound sensor that I have on my phone, I, I was playing with that, putting it right here in front of me and then walking to the other side of the room and whispering, it was picking me up. So imagine that. Imagine you're in you're you're in this old historic place at night you're on a ghost hunt and any little sound can generate a, a measurement of the decibels because that's what the sound sensor does it actually measures in decibels um, how loud the noise is so you take that random number the measurement of decibels you add it to the uh, the GPS location you add it to a random FM station that you have, and now you have a location on the radar, plus you have another random number that could match up to a list of words. Say, I don't know, the, the database of 2100 words that comes with the ghost radar, it matches up to one of those words or a set of words and it starts spitting them out. Basically, you can come down to an idea of, okay, so let's say we'll take, 
three sensors of my phone that could be popular with ghost hunting, okay? Your temperature sensor, your sound sensor, and your magnetic sensor. Look, the bottom fucking line is that this shit doesn't work. That's what it comes down to. It's a application for entertainment purposes only. You should take that as a red flag saying, this shit ain't real. That's what it is. I think it's irresponsible for ghost hunting teams to use such an application that they have no fucking clue if it works. That when you read about it and find that the designer has no fucking clue that it works, then you should understand that it's a bad fucking idea. I, s I swear, if you came to my house to investigate this place and you whipped out your phone and turned that ghost app on, I would kick you the fuck out. First of all, there's no documentation that this thing actually reads anything that has to do with ghosts. Second, you have no idea what a ghost is or what it's composed of or if it even exists. So there's no way that you know if this could read it or detect it, much less put it up on as a blip on a radar. In closing, I just want to say, do these things work? No. Why? Because your designers don't even know if they fucking work. So why should you think they do? It's something to think about. I mean, honestly, think about it. Stop what you're doing. Even stop watching this. Close your eyes and go, if the designer doesn't know if it works, why the fuck am I using it? Hmm. And maybe it'll dawn on you that, okay, maybe this guy is just designing this shit to make some money. Okay? Um, this goes along with any other tool. If you're going to use a tool on an investigation, you should know how it works. If you don't know how it works, why are you using it? I don't know. Alright, I think we're done talking about that one. Next. Alright, now I want to talk about the Ghost Cam app and Ghost Capture for iPhone. Yeah. The first question that comes to mind, honestly, how fucking stupid can you be? This Ghost Cam app is made as a novelty. It's for fun, it's for jokes, it's to make a ghost photo and have some fun and say, hey, look, buddy, look, I made a scary photo, blah, 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 blah. It's not meant for anything else. However, there have been several teams that have decided that, you know what, we're going to try and use this and make photos. So, not only do they make a photo with a ghost in it, they put it on their website and their Facebook page, and they promote it as real. <sighs> Stupid motherfuckers. Here's the problem, okay? Two of the teams actually use the same fucking ghosts that are in the ghost cam that you can use in any picture. They use the same image and then put it on their websites put it on their Facebook, and promoted it as genuine. One even said it was the Holy Grail. Um, they were called out by me. One team came out and said, okay, yeah, we know it's wrong, uh, and they tried to blame somebody else. And that somebody else blamed them, and back and forth we went. We still don't know who's to blame. Um, the second team that used the same fucking ghost was called Empire. And that guy, that guy denied it, challenged somebody. Like, the, the, the guy at Worst Paranormal called him out, challenged him, told him we knew what it was, and Empire guy said, P prove it, <laughs> you dumbass. So, Mr. Worst Paranormal proved it, showed it to him. The picture was immediately deleted, okay, taken off his site, gone. A couple weeks later, guess what? Motherfucker popped it back up. Okay? So now it's up there. Still up there. Man. Stupid shit. Then you have this other photo that uh, is supposedly taken in a hospital room. Okay? It looks like a hospital room. And then by the door, there's this image of a little ghostly girl 
okay? That's been passed around more than a $2 fucking whore, okay? Everybody and their brother has seen this photo. Yet, I'm still seeing ghost hunting teams post this on Facebook saying that they got it from a friend of theirs who wants us to go check out their house um, because they think there's little girls around her. What the fuck, dude? Seriously? What, what, what needs to be done is that these teams, you know, your goners, your empire, whatever the other fucking team was, all of you, you need to do your research. Before you put up a website saying you guys are professional and you're scientific and you have all this fucking experience, maybe you should do some research into the history of your hobby. I don't know. That sounds like a good idea to me. You know, figure out all the famous photos that are out there already. Why don't you start looking at all these ghost apps? Um, I mean, if you're going to use the ghost apps, guess what? There are people out there in the ghost hunting community that are, wait for it, smart. They're not idiots, okay? They will see this. They will recognize it and say, hey, you know what? I've seen this before. And they will pick up their phone. They'll do a little search. And within a minute, they're going to be like, hey. I found your fucking ghost. Booyah! You're screwed. You look like a total fucktard. And honestly, if you're going to use a ghost cam app and try to pass it off as a real photo, you are a fucktard. Here's another clue, okay? When you download an app to make ghost photos, such as the ghost cam, um, or, or any of, uh, of those, oh, I don't mean to just pick on that one, but there's, a, there's a dozens of them out there. If you download it, especially if it's free, guess what? Other people are going to download it. You're not the only one. You are not special. It's not there just for you. Okay? People like me will download it because I want a reference. I want to know what people like you are going to start putting in pictures. So I'm going to have a reference. And other people that are more like me are going to have screen captures of all of these apps so that I can immediately open it up and say oh I can compare it look at this look at that yes okay so I might have a list of a couple hundred of these fake ghosts that are available to me at a moment's notice and say yes it's a fake this is why this is what phone app it's on this is what version blah 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 it's a fake so the bottom line to this this whole section of the, the ghost cam and the ghost capture apps is don't fucking do it, all right? Just don't do it. I don't know if you're trying to be popular, if you're trying to get some friends or make yourself look like an expert or, you know, a big shot in the paranormal community. Doesn't matter what you're trying to do. What it actually does is make you look stupid, all right? So please stop. Stop doing all the ghost cam pictures. Stop reposting pictures that you see on the internet and you think are cool and you think maybe nobody will notice that you're stealing someone else's picture because we're going to notice, okay? So please stop. This I'm begging. Please, please fucking stop because it's stupid. That's it. So, that's it. That's the end of this show. If you have any complaints, please contact Lucas Steele in California. He is my complaint department. He's also Mexican, so be careful. He always has a knife. Uh, if you have any comments, please leave them in the lines and spaces below. If you want to get in touch with me, you can do so either by email at powerinvestigator at comcast.net or on Facebook at Kenny Biddle Awesome. That's A-W-S-M. You can... Uh, give any questions or comments or if you want to add additional information to what I'm saying here that's fine if you want to agree with me great if you want to disagree with me talk to Lou all right and take care and I'll see you later